and uh, plenty of reasons to look forward to the next season. Just as we've enjoyed this and we expect a, a similar front-running battle to what we've had in 2021, let's hope. Yeah, you certainly hope for us and uh, with the uh, top rack and Jonathan Ray, you'd expect both them to be very strong all the way through next season. Ducati's going to be interesting. You put Alvaro Bautista back on that bike, you expect to see him very strong. And uh, we even hear rumblings that if Top Rap can manage to seal the world championship, uh, a certain uh, Mr. Sofoglu is pushing what, the for there to be a uh, Turkish round back on the calendar. And we'd certainly like to go back to Istanbul. Yeah, Istanbul, it's, of course, it's been uh, gotten ready for world championship action again with Formula One returning there last year. So the track looks like it would be, it'd be still a fantastic place to go racing. And uh, certainly the atmosphere would be something else. So with a bit of luck, that's something that can happen in future because the Turkish fans definitely want to be able to see Top Rack on a Superbike, Chan Onchu, Bahatin Safoglu as well. There's a lot of good young riders coming through in Turkey. Alex Lowe's back on track uh, this weekend. Now, he's had a few uh, aborted attempts to return from injury. He has been struggling uh, with injury niggles throughout this uh, 2021 campaign. Had a uh, pre-season uh, crash all the way back in February that uh, sort of knocked him uh, early on. But mainly the, uh, the big incident in Barcelona. <laughs> it seems like a very least on this. and that could spring a bit of a surprise over the course of the weekend but really for everyone this is President Joko Widodo who was also on hand to inaugurate this circuit last week the Asia Talent Cup was the first campaign but Steve today's sessions in themselves will also be fascinating a totally new track for everyone a blank slate no data to call upon Friday then becomes even more important than usual for riders and teams. Yeah, nobody knows what to expect over the course of this weekend. There could be some torrential rain has been in the area in recent weeks as well and that could spring a bit of a surprise over the course of the weekend. But really for everyone, this is a step into the unknown. This is where you'll spend this. Looks like it's going to raise concerns whether you're looking at Asian style. Yeah, I think especially for factor all over the course of this weekend. Is he going to change his riding and his race style? I don't think so. That's not a top rack is. But we could easily have an instant between those two riders because we've seen so much close action between them all the way through this season. Could he change his approach if he only needed a tenth position in the last race of the season? I think if it comes down to <laughs> Sunday he can change his approach but it's going to be it's going to be tough for top rack to do that. He's he's very adamant he wants to stick to his guns and win the championship the way that he's been riding all the way through this season and uh, I think it's going to be interesting to see how he approaches it especially on Sunday. To be perfectly honest if we do get into a situation um, of, of top rack Raz Gakioglu uh, racing for race victories throughout this weekend we wouldn't be surprised and uh, it would certainly not be uh, something that would go against the grain as it were he's never pulled his punches uh, throughout his world SBK career and certainly not this season. Yeah and it's one of those situations where for top rack he knows how he's managed to get into this position and uh, he knows that on his days pretty much unbeatable and uh, i think he wants to make sure that this weekend he lays down a marker and shows that that's exactly what he's going to expect all the way through if anything he's added an extra level to that since Assen in particular uh, a weekend where he was caught in the garage saying that's it the, the championship's over um, it was almost as if at that moment he said well from here on in nothing to lose because the the championship in his mind well, OK, in the heat of the moment, um, looked like it was slipping away from him. Jonathan Ray, three wins in a row, top rack a massive margin of points to recover. Uh, twice he's managed to recover points and, and get back into the lead of this world championship. And it's a lead that at the moment he doesn't look like surrendering. Yeah, I think it's one of those situations where top rack will look at the points that have gone amiss for him from a bit of bad luck. Jonathan Ray will look at the points that have gone away from him. And more often than not for Jonathan, it's been because of his own mistakes. He's had to ride on the limit and we saw in places like Moss and Donnie Park and Portimao he got caught out by that and those 30 points added up very quickly for him and uh, over the course of the year the two riders have been very evenly matched but uh, you'd have to say on the balance of how the season's gone Top Rack very much deserves to go into the championship decider with a pretty sizable advantage. Those two retirements in Portimao in particular very very costly uh, both from uh, front running positions of course um, earlier in the season we mentioned Donington Park race two, uh, race one in Most, uh, all of those costly in terms of points. Ironically, this has been the one season where Jonathan Ray's typical strategy of just banking podiums would have left him there or thereabouts coming into this final round with top rack Raz Gavion, with precisely this season that Ray's mistakes have crept in for the first time in a long time. Yeah, but uh, the same